Welcome to West Branch, Iowa. I'm Kerry J. Hahn here at the Hoover Presidential Library and Museum. And for the next little while, I'm going to show you a really fun exhibit. It's called Iowa A to Z. And it's here at the Hoover Library until November 1st, 2009. Let's start with A. In this case, A stands for American Gothic, one of the world's most famous pictures or paintings painted by Iowa's own Grant Wood. He grew up in Anamosa, that's another A. He's buried there too. American Gothic painted in 1930. It now resides in Chicago, but Iowa has always claimed it. The painting American Gothic by Grant Wood the woman in the picture was modeled by his sister Nan. She's supposed to be the daughter of the farmer and not the wife. The man was modeled after the family dentist, Dr. McKeeby. B stands for baseball. Of course, the Field of Dreams is at Dyersville. There's all sorts of other baseball connections, too. Hall of Famer, Bob Feller. He's from Van Meter. And of course, we have teams, the Colonels in Cedar Rapids, uh, the River Bandits in the Quad Cities. They used to be the Swing. The Iowa Cubs in Des Moines. And here's an old uniform. Actually, it's a recreation of the Cedar Rapids Bunnies back in 1906. would C stand for in Iowa than corn. At the time of statehood in 1846, the Iowa prairie was rich but hard to plow. But in the 1850s, John Deere's steel moldboard plow did the job. Iowa became the U.S. leader in corn production in 1890, with crops covering 32.8 million acres. This exhibit featured a lister plow, hand-operated corn planter, and a corn husk doll. D is for Des Moines. Incorporated in 1851, Des Moines lies in the confluence of the Des Moines River and Raccoon Rivers. In 1857, the capital was moved from Iowa City to Des Moines. The capital building, with a 275-foot-high central dome covered with 23-karat gold leaf, was constructed between 1871 and 1886. Des Moines is home to Drake University, the World Food Prize Foundation, the Great Ape Trust of Iowa, Living History Farms, the Iowa Cubs baseball team, over 50 parks, and a zoo, a science center, and a botanical garden, and of course, the Iowa State Fair. This is a scale model of the governor's mansion, Terrace Hill, made of 193,000 matchsticks. Creator, Patrick Acton of Gladbrook, has created over 60 models of everything from castles to trains, Jets to Cowboys using anywhere from 500 to 600,000 matchsticks. E is for Enterprise. Aside from agriculture, Iowa is a national leader in the production of renewable energy through the production of ethanol, biodiesel, and wind energy. From roto-rooters to windows to popcorn, here are some of the state national and international businesses headquartered in Iowa. We are sincerely honored to feature two individuals who profoundly influenced progress in Iowa with their business achievement and expertise, Roy J. Carver and William B. Corton. These men shared their good fortune throughout eastern Iowa. Roy J. Carver developed a self-priming pump during the Depression and expanded the pump operation when the U.S. entered World War II. After the war, 
Carver perfected a tire retread process that he had seen in Germany to begin the Bandag Corporation in Muscatine. He parlayed a 100,000 nest egg into a $300 million empire. He never settled for second best. He said, I never wanted to make money off a lousy product. William B. Quarton was one of the founders of radio and television in Iowa and the nation. He also was president of the National Association of Broadcasters. Quarton worked for Thomas Edison, hired Walter Cronkite, and established WMT Radio and Television and developed cable and public television in Iowa. He said, giving away a healthy portion of my wealth has been my way of giving back to the community that has been so good to me. In our most recent history, F stands for flood. Of course, eastern Iowa was hit hard by the floods last summer, as well as other parts of the state. Quick, what is Iowa's state rock? If you said geode, you're right. Look at these babies. Did you know that Keokuk is a great place to find big geodes? G for geology and geography. Also a part of the exhibit, the giant sloth. It stood almost 10 feet tall, weighed two to three tons, they became extinct 9,500 years ago, along with mammoths. Here is a casting of a claw of a giant sloth. The Devonian Gorge. Floodwaters in 1993 and 2008 flowed over the emergency spillway at Coralville Lake for 28 days. Flooding washed away sediments 15 feet deep to reveal fossils within a large stretch of bedrock that had been an ocean floor 375 million years ago. H stands for Hawkeye Heritage. We have the Amish, Mennonites, Dutch, Irish, Czech and Slovaks. A lot of people came here to make Iowa a great state. Germans were the largest group of immigrants to Iowa, and they remained the largest group of foreign-born until 1970. Religious groups of German ancestry were attracted to sparsely populated Iowa so they could preserve and develop separatist communities. Three such groups are notable in Iowa, the Amana colonies, Amish, and Mennonites. Scandinavians who were lured to Iowa by rich farmland began arriving in the 1850s. The Dutch from the Netherlands hoped to find economic opportunity and religious freedom in Iowa. Central and Eastern Europeans also faced religious and political intolerance that drove them out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Some African Americans began their life in Iowa as slaves, even though slavery was against the territorial law. The 1840 census listed 16 slaves in Dubuque. Small numbers of free blacks farmed or worked as tradesmen, but they were denied equality until later in the century. Latin Americans have steadily joined the Iowa workforce since the 1920s. People from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Puerto Rico, and Nicaragua have escaped their countries to find a new home away from economic and political strife. Southeast Asian refugees escaping war and political retribution from Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos began to arrive in 1975. The two predominant groups are Thai Dam and Hmong. I is for inventor. Did you know the creator of the Eskimo pie lived here in Iowa? And the creator of the red delicious apple? The man who discovered those radiation belts named after him the Van Allen belts. And here's a name new to me that's very important in today's world, John Vincent Adanasoff. He invented the first digital computer at Iowa State. Here are some more of Iowa's many achievers.
J for journeys. The first white settlers through the Iowa Territory traveled by covered wagon, horseback, or by foot on widened Indian trails. Wagons cut deep ruts in the spring mud that evolved into bottomless mires. Sometimes trees were used to create plank roads for a rough roadbed. In the 1920s, the Lincoln Highway cut across Iowa and was the first paved transcontinental highway. Beginning in the 1840s, railroad tracks appeared in Iowa and headed west. In 1869, coast-to-coast train service cost $100 plus $4 a day for first-class sleeping cars. Many farm-related industries, such as meatpacking plants in Sioux City, Waterloo, Des Moines, and Ottumwa, were established because of railroads. Quaker Oats opened in Cedar Rapids, and the lumber industry also spurred great fortunes along the Mississippi River. K for Kitchen Delights With 89% of Iowa's land area devoted to farming, our state ranks first in the nation in the production of corn, soybeans, eggs, and pork. The 2007 Iowa Census of Agriculture illustrates the interest in local and organically grown produce. Iowa is the first in the nation in the number of local markets per capita with nearly 200. Local beehives produced 1.8 million pounds of honey Grape acreage multiplied fourfold to 797 acres. Iowa's wine industry boosted the state's agricultural tourism into a $12.7 million industry. Sales of greenhouse vegetables and fresh cut herbs increased to over $7.5 million. L for landscapes. Legend has it that an Indian tribe seeking a new place to settle gazed west across the Mississippi River and cried out, Iowa, meaning beautiful land. Well, actually, that's not true. Actually, Sioux Indians traveling along the Mississippi were caught in a severe windstorm. From the experience, they called themselves Pahuchi, meaning dirty face. Filtered through the ears of other Native Americans and French explorers, the name appears in historical records under a variety of transformations, ultimately becoming Iowa. In the 1830s, prairies covered 29 million acres. That's 83% of what now is Iowa. Scattered throughout the landscape were bogs, moss-covered riverbanks, oxbow lakes, and miles of timber. Over the past 175 years, 99.9% of the prairie and 95% of the wetlands have vanished. Prairie remnants in the state include the Neal Smith Wildlife Refuge near Des Moines and the Broken Kettle Grassland near Sioux City, both more than 3,000 acres. This painting, Landscape, October Afternoon by Cedar Rapids native Marvin Cohn, was given by Cohn to Mr. and Mrs. Hoover back in May of 1929. M stands for Music Men. We have the creator of the Music Man, Meredith Wilson from Mason City, plus Glenn Miller from Clorinda, Vix Beiderbeck from Davenport, singer Andy Williams from Wall Lake, Iowa. And it goes on and on. And we mustn't forget the first folks who were here, the Native Americans, including the Meskwakis. The Iowa Indians had arrived in what is now Iowa by following herds of deer and buffalo back and forth from the Mississippi River to the Missouri River, finally settling in the Des Moines River Valley. In 1823, an attack by the Sauk nearly wiped out the Iowa tribe. The Sauk and Meskwaki, formerly called the Sack and Fox, were closely allied but maintained separate tribal identities. The Meskwaki resided along the Iowa River under the leadership of Chiefs Wapolo and Powashik. The tribe was removed to a Kansas reservation in 1845, but returned 11 years later to purchase land in Tama County. The Sauk, living in southwest Illinois, were led by Chief Keokuk and the warrior Chief Blackhawk. In 1832, Black defied orders and led 10,000 federal troops and state militia on a four-month chase through the territory. In spite of Black Hawk's efforts, the Sauk were defeated 
moved to Iowa and forced to cede tribal lands to the U.S. government. In 1845, the government removed them to Kansas. O stands for One Room Schoolhouse. You can see the desk and the books here. The One Room Schoolhouse taught thousands of Iowans over the years, and today Iowa is still known for its schools. By 1900, Iowa had the highest literacy rate in any state in the nation. Iowa's first school in Lee County was built back in 1830. By 1847, the state provided free public schools for every white child between the age of 5 and 21. Racial integration arrived in 1868, and by 1900, Iowa had 12,600 one-room schools, and nearly 5,000 continued operating into the 1950s. With few textbooks available, children learned through memorization, recitation, and practiced arithmetic, spelling, and penmanship on slates. When more books and maps arrived, subjects like history, geography, and literature were taught. My fellow Americans, P stands for Political Caucus. The national candidates for president come here every four years to get that name recognition. In fact, President Barack Obama stood at this podium twice when he came to Iowa. Q for quips and quirks. In our rural state, no Iowan is very far from a cornfield or a hog lot. Two counties, Clayton and Van Buren, do not even have a single stoplight. Outsiders often view Iowans as backward or quaint, yet more people with college degrees per capita live in our state than any other. We do appreciate a good tease, but prefer to dish it out ourselves. Iowans are smart. I never graduated from Iowa, but I was there for two terms, Truman's and Eisenhower's, so said Alex Karras. And Iowans, you might say, are peculiar. Soda is pop, lunch is dinner, dinner is supper. Iowans mark beginnings and endings. The two hardest things to say in life are hello for the first time, goodbye, for the last. R is for Ragbri. Sponsored by the Des Moines Register, Ragbri registers annual great bicycle ride across Iowa is the longest, largest, and oldest non-competitive bike excursion in the world. On the last full week of July, bikers of all ages, from the Missouri River to the Mississippi River, they ride regardless of weather. In 1973, Register feature writer John Karras proposed the idea to bike across Iowa to columnist Donald Call. They invited the public to join them. Approximately 300 did. Fifteen years later, riders came from all 50 states and many foreign countries. In 2006, Lance Armstrong, seven-time winner of the Tour de France, joined in for a few days. And get ready, Ragbri 38, coming up. July 25th through the 31st, 2010. S stands for State Fair. Every August, people flock to Des Moines for stuff on a stick. The first Iowa State Fair in 1854 was a three-day event held at Fairfield. For 25 cents admission, the fair had nearly 8,000 visitors. Held in various communities through the years, the state fair moved to Des Moines in 1878, and in 1886 moved to its permanent location at East 30th and University. Contests showcased beef and dairy cattle, swine, sheep, goats, llamas, rabbits, cats, and dogs. Tournaments test such talents as rooster crowing and hog, turkey, duck, and chicken calling. 
The State Fair talent search, hosted for over 35 years by Mr. State Fair himself, Bill Riley. It's now hosted by his son, Bill Riley Jr. Yearly attractions include the Butter Cow, the Midway, and Heritage Village. And T stands for tornadoes. We wish Iowa wasn't famous for its tornadoes, but we are glad Iowans have overcome when the tornadoes have struck. Iowa is in Tornado Alley and is ranked second only behind Kansas for recorded tornadoes. The National Weather Service reports that since 1995, Iowa has averaged 56 tornadoes per year. Rotating funnels of condensed moisture and debris can measure a few hundred yards in diameter with internal wind speeds from 100 to 500 miles per hour. The worst tornado on record in Iowa struck Comanche on June 3, 1860. It swept away most of the town, killed 134 people, injured 81, and left 2,500 people homeless. U stands for unusual and unexpected, like finding Star Trek uh, in the little town of Riverside, Iowa. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the television show, mentioned in the script that Captain Kirk was from Iowa. So the folks in Riverside wanted to name their summer festival Trek Fest and asked Mr. Roddenberry if Captain Kirk could be born in Riverside. He said yes, and people have been trekking to Riverside ever since. The landscape of Iowa hides an assortment of surprising sights, remarkable events, unique features, extraordinary architecture, and bizarre tales. Did you know? In 1873, Jesse James rode into Iowa, stopping just west of Adair to commit his first train robbery. He escaped with 3000 bucks. The B-29 plane that dropped the World War II atomic bomb on Hiroshima was named for the mother of pilot Colonel Paul Tebbets, Enola Gay Haggard of Glidden, Iowa. The Fenelon Place elevator in Dubuque is the world's shortest and steepest railway. The Grotto of the Redemption in West Bend is a stone shrine built by Father Paul Matthias Doberstein over 35 years, beginning in 1912. The Iowa Speedway in Newton opened in 2006 and the 7-8th mile long paved oval racing track has over 25,000 seats. The St. Anthony of Padua Chapel in Festina is the smallest cathedral at 12 feet by 16 feet. The Seacrest Barn in Downey, not far from West Branch, is a rare octagonal barn that marked its 125th anniversary in 2008. V is for volunteerism. Nationwide, an average of 27% of Americans volunteer for a wide range of programs. Iowa ranks sixth in the nation with a volunteer rate of 37%. With a volunteer rate of 45%, Iowa City ranks second among mid-sized cities. In this exhibit, W stands for writers, because there are a lot of writer connections to Iowa, like the Writers Workshop in Iowa City. And for instance, did you know Mark Twain spent some time in Muscatine?
X marks the spot. I love this map because it has all sorts of famous people connected to Iowa. Either they were born here or lived here or made their fame here. Why for yardsticks? Did you know that Iowa is 56,288 square miles? The state is ranked 25th in landmass. We are about 1,050 miles west of the Atlantic Ocean and 1,450 miles east of the Pacific Ocean. East-west distance, 330 miles. North-south distance, 215 miles. Highest elevation is Hawkeye Point at 1,670 feet in northwest Osceola County. Lowest elevation is the southeast tip of Iowa in Lee County at 480 feet. Average annual rainfall, 34 inches. Average annual snowfall, 32 inches. Snowiest month in Iowa history was December 2000. Smallest town is Beaconsfield with 11 residents. Largest city is Des Moines, population 200,924. This beaver stands for Z. How do you get beaver for Z? Well, zoology. We look a little bit at the wildlife that can be found here in Iowa, past and present. You'll even see a movie star, a puppet raccoon, created by Mason City puppeteer Bill Bear. You can find this exhibit, Iowa from A to Z, right here at the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library and Museum in West Branch, just off Interstate 80. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.